It's been over a year since the baby formula shortage began in the US. While the crisis is not as dire as it was in mid-2022, there are still shortages in various parts of the country. In fact, there have been indications in recent months of supplies dwindling again. What caused the scarcity in the first place and why does it continue? For the past year, uh, families in the US have faced a severe uh, shortage of infant formula which was mainly related to a closure of an Abbott Nutrition factory in Michigan last February, so in February 2022. Um, The main issue was that Abbott held a significant share of the U.S. infant formula market, uh, and it actually was one of the major major players uh, for supplying formula through the government-sponsored program, which allows uh, families to access baby formula at a discounted price. And so... um, what happened after the closure was that the shelves in many, many supermarkets and many, uh, many pharmacies remained uh, re- remained empty, uh, and it became a very big issue uh, accessing baby formula uh, when parents needed it. Uh, this caused uh, a series of uh, of issues. So both uh, people choosing be- between doing homemade formula, which is quite unsafe, uh, but also, essentially, they uh, they tried to access formula through the black market, uh, which was not uh, not the safest thing to do uh, as well. Uh, after the shortage began, uh, what we saw in the U.S. was that the government tried to ad- address the situation uh, by uh, by boosting the production at home. So by essentially by by working with the other suppliers, other producers of infant formula in the U.S. Uh, but also to import more, uh, which uh, which they saw as the best uh, short-term solution to the problem. Uh, now, a year has passed, and what we have seen is that um, the problems have decreased uh, if we compare them to May to July, let's say, 2022. So mm, the, the stocks have gone up, but people are still reporting problems in access. So the problems are felt mostly by people, by families, in rural areas, uh, in working class uh, neighborhoods. And that's because um, these groups have trouble in uh, actually allocating the, they don't have the resources needed to track formula in the market conditions, which we are seeing now. So at the moment, uh, if you're if you're living in a rural part of the US uh, and if there is no infant formula uh, in, your, uh, in your town, uh, you're forced to look for it in other places, uh, which means that you have to give it enough time, which many people don't have because they have jobs, they have uh, they have second jobs, they have third jobs. Uh, and then in addition to that, you have to uh, to take the time and you, of course you have to pay for the uh, for the gas and for the other things that you need to actually get to the other place where the where you have located the formula. And then in many cases, it turns out that while you find the formula, while you drive to get it, and while you get there, uh, it's actually sold. So again, the situation has got, uh, has improved uh, has has improved compared to to last year, but it's still not at the point where um, at an optimal up at an optimal point. Let's put it that way. While issues of production and supply may have been the triggers for the crisis, a long history of industry lobbying and misplaced policy priorities laid the ground for the crisis. What are these factors? The issue uh, with the United States in particular is that they rely uh, a lot on infant formula. So infant formula uh, has become the standard of feeding babies uh, for uh, for a majority of people in the US, actually. And that's uh, that's the critical point. So uh, when we look at the U.S., uh, so breastfeeding is kind of uh, perceived as uh, as an alternative, while infant formula is taken as a standard. And we know from the WHO, we know from many other public health warnings that it actually should be the other way around. So uh, infant formula should be used uh, in cases where uh, where it's where it's uh, health appropriate and where uh, there isn't. Uh, another way to to um, uh, to feed the babies. So it's um, one thing that should be pointed out. It's not about the parents choosing. You know, it's not the parents' fault that they choose the formula over breastfeeding, uh, but it's the situation which create which makes it impossible for families to consider other ways of feeding babies in comparison to uh, to us uh, to feeding them baby formula in the US. Uh, so. 
this is one thing. And then uh, this kind of policy framework is uh, impacted by several things. So uh, we can start uh, with uh, the enormous amounts of uh, of money that the commercial milk formula industry has poured into marketing and poured into lobbying the U.S. government uh, in the U.S. Uh, and essentially making sure that the products are um, are very visible, they're uh, very much uh, supported, and they're just promoted as something that's uh, that's desirable and uh, that actually sometimes has health benefits, which again, we know that uh, they don't actually have that kind of benefit. That's one thing. Uh, another set of policies which uh, impacts this kind of uh, reliance on baby formula uh, is the labor context, because we know that the US is one it's actually the only uh, so-called industrial in, industrialized uh, uh, country in the world which does not have paid mandatory maternity leave. So that means that essentially you give birth, there's no leave. Uh, you don't have time to actually learn about breastfeeding. You don't have access to the resources at the hospital, at home, uh, in uh, in you know in in discussion with health workers, to, which would enable you to breastfeed and which would allow the uh, the baby to be breastfed until it's at least six months old and uh, desirably even longer. So um, what needs to happen to actually shift this, uh, this context, which we are seeing in the US now, is that the government uh, takes a very radical turn. It's not about making sure that there is this uh, this amount of baby formula on the shelves, but it's also on strengthening the other things that actually allow for uh, for better nutrition for for infants and and children. Uh, this would again mean uh, different labor policies, which would mean parental leave, family leave, maternal leave. Uh, it would also mean uh, more support for human milk milk banks, uh, which are an alternative to infant formula, uh, which is not being talked about uh, so much. Uh, and then again, it's uh, it has a lot to do with breaking this link with the industry, which is very, very strong at the moment. Uh, and uh, it has actually led to a situation where you have uh, a very small number of companies dominating the market and making billions of dollars uh, on such an important uh, part of, uh, of uh, human nutrition. 